What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got a new series of tutorials I'm going to be showing you. It is how to use Mixplay Interactive and how to make buttons and do commands and do stuff like that on Mixer, which is a very unique feature that Mixer has, which allows the viewer to interact with the streamer and it makes streaming a lot more fun and watching streams a lot more fun for the viewers. So just to show you what I'm talking about if you've never seen this before, I have loaded up here my mixer and I'm going to enable all the stuff I'm going to be showing you in this whole series. So we're using a program called Firebot and that kind of gets programmed into mixers back end and it creates a menu like this. Well it doesn't create a menu, it creates the ability to create a menu. So this is just my final product of what I'm streaming with right now. So let's just say my stream's going on right here. A viewer walks in and they go, oh, cool. And they have all these buttons right here that they can hit. Now, if they're subscribed to my Patreon, then they can go in here. And if they, if I were partnered and they were a Mixer subscriber, they can click this button and go in here. But since they're just watching a casual viewer, they can click casual viewer. And then they see all the buttons I have laid out. Now, all these are programmed to do different things. So this one's programmed to cheer. And then it announces whoever pressed the button just cheered or something like that. You can program it to say whatever you want. Say, get good. And if you listen, it has sounds that go with it. Stuff like that. And then if they want to know what my social media is, they can click it and it whispers to them specifically. It says, hey, to get to know that, click this link to YouTube. Or click that for the Twitter. Or go to Patreon and support it. Or go donate if you wanted. All these are right there. But everything does something different. And you can see some of them are on timers, so people aren't blasting them and spamming them. Yeah, and then in the menu, I also have them, you can actually charge them, make them cost sparks. So another, another way of not spamming them. Or if you become a mixer partner, the sparks can go into your account and help you get paid out. But since you're, if you're not a mixer partner, then it's really not going to matter where the sparks go. They're just going to be wasting them if that's the case. And so your best bet, if you want to be more interactive with this kind of stuff, is make it all free, at least till you get partnered. And then those sparks will actually mean something. So that's why I even put a notation there. And we can go back. And now if you're a patron or a subscriber, you'll be able to click these. And the VIP lounge is what I call it. And you can go in here and do the same buttons but a bunch more too. Another thing I want to show you is these actually you can program to show GIFs as well on your stream so I'm going to minimize this real quick and this is what the interface looks like that you have running in the background and so if I have my stream up then we link Firebot into it and then we click one of these buttons and let's just say in the VIP lounge let's go to the air horn you can make a GIF, you can link a GIF to it as well. Thunder. I don't know, just some noises. We got laughter. But yeah, so that's something you can do that really makes your stream more interactive and stand out above the crowd. You know, because there's a lot of just basic streamers out there doing basic things. Me included, I do a lot of basic stuff. But I like to go against the grain a little bit and try to figure out cool things to make my stream more interactive. And so setting up this Firebot and setting up all this stuff is one way I figured out I could at least try to stand out from the crowd. So this video is going to be the prequel of getting everything set up. And then we're going to go into different lessons as I make these videos. So the first thing you're going to want to do is load up your internet. Go ahead and download Firebot. Just go ahead. You can Google Firebot and then it's going to come up to crowbartools.com and then you download Firebot. And then it, once it finishes, you set it up. But after that, you also want to make sure you have Streamlabs. You can do this with OBS as well, but Streamlabs is designed for gamers. It's a lot more interactive, has themes and donations and lots of just widgets that are all built into the program. It's really awesome. The link is in the description for Firebot and for Streamlabs. Those two things you're going to want to download. Next, you're going to want to create an imager account or some sort of image hosting account online like Giphy Cat or something along those lines. But, you know, imager, I think, is the most popular. It's been around for the longest. And I have, as you see, about 75 images in mine because you can link images 
to make your buttons and all the stuff. All that's custom made that I made in Photoshop. And then of course you're going to want a Mixer account, which mine is mixer.com slash scrapyardfilms. So install Firebot and when you install it, it's going to ask you to do a bunch of setups and like, oh, link an account and whatnot. Link your main Mixer account and go from there. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just going to assume you've installed it and then we're going to create a new board, change board, add a new board. We're not going to be able to do this just yet because we have to start this off in Mixer. So you've installed Firebot. It's all blank. You don't know what's going on. You're confused. It makes sense. Don't worry. It was extremely confusing when I started off. I'm going to disconnect this. So we got that and you got Streamlabs opened up, which that's going to be more of a later kind of deal. So we don't have to have that open at the moment, but I'm just going to minimize it. Open up Mixer. Click your account. Go down to Dev Lab. Go to Mix Play Projects up here at the top left. And you see there's my first attempt at buttons. We're going to do another one. So let's go ahead and if you don't, you probably won't have one. So just click the plus sign up here and we're going to name it Tutorial, which I'm going to name it that. You can name it whatever you want. Project Game, you can, you can make specific Mix Play interactive stuff for specific games. They actually have preset mix play stuff you can download if you don't want to learn how to program your own. You can actually download stuff that people already made that was designed for specific games. It's pretty cool, you can do that too. But we're going to create our own because we are better than that. So, let's call it, let's just may say, I don't know, PUBG. Probably, it's a very famous game. There, bam. Hit save. Alright, cool. We can name it, we can put, you know, a description, a download URL, we don't have to do any of that right now. We're going to go over to build at the top left. And it's going to bring us to our mix play menu, our blank menu where we do everything. So first thing is, let me explain it a little bit. So this is where you're going to be dragging and dropping buttons, resizing them, and then that's pretty much what you're going to be doing here, your buttons. Now they're all transparent, you're not going to see pictures or anything like that, it's just going to be a square that you can resize. They can only get so big and they can only get so small, so you have to be kind of weary of how big you make it and your layout of it. Your scenes over here is basically menus. So you can have your default is your primary menu that everybody jumps into right when they load up your stream and your mixed play is active. That's your scene, your default scene. You can't change the name of that. It's just bam, default scene, first scene. Controls is over here is where you can add things, buttons joysticks you can make people interact with your game if they press if they press the letter a it'll make you jump something like that you can program that into your game labels you can just make exactly what it says a label of something next to a button mouse you can make somebody control your mouse movement do clicks basically like it says a screen control you can program all that text box just add general text and these are the five things you can add so we're just gonna add a button, test button real quick. First button, hit add, and then bam, our button's right there. It's always gonna start off with this little exclamation mark, and to get rid of that, you just have to name it. Now, if you're gonna be using a picture like I did for PNGs as your button faces, then you don't wanna name this anything, you can just press a space, and then it makes it blank. Spark cost, if you're a partner, you can make it cost something, or if you want to make sure it's definitely not spammed, then you can make it save 5,000 sparks. But if you're not a partner, as far as March 7th, 2019, non-partners do not get these sparks if viewers press the button that costs sparks. So they just waste them. So I like to have mine zero. You can make a keyboard control do this. So if you wanted to hotkey it, uh, if you had like a MIDI controller or something if you wanted to do it yourself, you can program it to one of those buttons. Tooltip is like when you hover your mouse over it, it tells you what that button is. This is a test. Text size, change it to whatever you want. By default, um, I believe it's like 24 or something like that, but it's, it's a good decent size. You can change your text color, Accent color, which is the applies to the cooldown spinner. So you can make that thing change your color. Focus color. So when you are hovering over the button, the, the border can change. Border color, just it being there. Background color. And then, of course, background image. This is where you'd insert a URL of the background image or the button face that you want to use. That's if you wanted to use a custom image. 
So we have that there. You just click the X and that goes away. And you click the little two bars and drag it onto your scene. And voila, we have a button. This is our first button. And this is what all the buttons are gonna look like. So it gets a little confusing once you have a ton of them on there because you kind of forget where they are. So we're just gonna have this button right here. It doesn't do anything. It's just a button. We're gonna hit save. And once we've saved it, that's okay. Let's go to this code option right here. And once you get here, you're gonna see your project version ID down here. I got mine blurred, but yeah, I mean, by the time y'all watch this in the years to come, <laughs> that's gonna be long gone. Um, so then you just hit this little copy button, then go down to Firebot. Once you're here, you should have a blank thing. If you go to buttons and then you go up here, the boards, if you click, probably not gonna be on anything, but you just click add new board and then paste your code into there. Hit add board, and then there it is. Our board showing our one button right there. It doesn't do anything, but it's there. Now to see this button, easy, we just drag this out a little bit. Since our board is synced to Firebot, if we click this little on button, those all should light up. And then if we click this, go back to Mixer, I'll take the size of that. Click our, click our channel, click home. And there's our button, our test button. It's gray, and it says this is a test. But that's our button. And that is the first thing. And you've done it. You have created a button on there that does nothing. But in the next episode, um, we're going to make that button do something. So thanks for watching. If this helped you out, be sure to like and subscribe. And, you know, post some questions below. I may not be able to answer everybody. And y'all may be asking something more than my capability or my knowledge of this. I'm just going to show you how to make what I made. So I will see you guys in the next video.